Welcome back to the ultimate Lexus IS200 track project proudly sponsored by eBay. In today's episode, we're going to be changing the clutch, we're going to be installing a short shifter and a beautiful light and flywheel. We get the car in the air and set to work on bolting the gearbox and starter motor. Well, Gareth does. I'm uh, at the moment just project managing what's going on here, so um, good. Just keep on. Keep on trucking. Twisting. Yeah. Good. Oh, good. Good wrist action there. It's good. Beautiful. It's good. We put the car back on the ground to access the bolts at the top of the gearbox and then disconnect the battery. We then put it back up in the air where I use all my height to take off the slave cylinder. Ah, yeah, yeah. This is why you wear goggles. Next, we take off the heat shield and under trace before whipping off the exhaust and removing the prop shaft from the back of the gearbox. So now we're going to take the gearbox jack. Jack up the gearbox, unbolt the gearbox, and then win. Yeah? Hopefully. Gareth takes off the gear stick and we're completely free to take off the gearbox. After a bit of persuasion, it comes free, meaning it's time for a victory dance. So the gearbox is out. Now it's time to change the clutch and flywheel up there. We're going to take the pressure plate off. This is held in by bolts all around it and then inside there will be the clutch, so we'll drop that out. And then inside there, there should be an arrangement of bolts, and that way we should, by unloosening those, we should be able to take the flywheel off and swap it around for our light and flywheel. A yeah, pretty glorious pressure plate. Well, it's not bad, it's still a fair bit of light in that. Yeah. So while Gareth is busy working on the clutch and the flywheel, I'm gonna take the existing gear stick off and then I'm gonna replace it with this new short shifter, which is a, uh, yeah, I've gotta get it in first. The short shifter cost me 49 pounds on eBay and changing it is a matter of sliding it in and bolting it up. Well, that's the theory as this one took a fair bit of persuasion. Once it's finally in, Gareth then removes the old heavy dual mass flywheel. Dual mass. There's a lot more to it, a lot thicker. It's got some springs inside and it helps iron out some of the vibrations caused by the engine. As you can see there, there's two masses to it. So there's the outside of the flywheel and then the inner part. And that moves. And then this one over here doesn't have that, just one solid piece. And equally, because it's got a lot less meat in it, we have to use shorter bolts. So these are the ones that came with it. So we will use those ones. Done. We then put on the new light and flywheel, which cost me £469 on eBay. Bolt it in place and torque it up. We then put on the new clutch, which cost £135 on eBay, before putting it in place along with the pressure plate. So ideally we want this as true as possible, so that when we raise the gearbox up, it'll slide straight in through this part of the clutch and then into the bearing at the back of the engine. So obviously the clutch and flywheel bought on eBay, new. Uh, the flywheel is a Squint 5.9 light and flywheel and the clutch is an OEM ASIN clutch. So it should bite more nicely and the flywheel should uh, completely transform the ride. We jack the gearbox back up to go in position until we realize that my beautiful short shifter is in the way and needs removing to go in later. Once in, we bolt the gearbox back on, put in the prop shaft, attach the slave cylinder, starter motor, and finally the exhaust system. So everything underneath the car is now done. The gearbox is all bolted on bar one bolt that we need to access from the top. The exhaust is in, everything is torqued. And all we need to do now is put the gear shifter back in from the top and the air filter, and then we're, we're done. Good to go. We're done. Happy days, let's do this. But then, but then it's... <laughs> Gareth puts the last bolt in through the engine bay and I put in my new K&N air filter that I got on eBay for just 50 pounds. Finally, we reinstall the short shifter and the mighty IS200 track build is done. Now, let's hit the track for the final time to see just how fast this car is. I'm back at Kerbera in the IS200 track car. Let's see what it can do. Before we get into lap times, a quick note about today's weather conditions. They're far from ideal with colder temperatures, humidity, dark clouds and regular showers. But because the track is fully booked until July, we've got no choice but to crack on and hope for a good result. Now then, let's take a look at our new contender, the Civic Type R, which boasts 306 bhp, an extensive aero package, VTEC and a turbo. The Lexus is up first and has a 38.61 second lap time to beat from the previous episode, where 
admittedly, the track conditions were more favourable than they are now. Because this is the final reckoning, we're giving each car 10 laps to really show what they can do. You may notice I'm wearing a crash helmet and I'm also sitting on a pillow. It's a bit of a bit of a booster cushion because a lot of you guys mentioned that I should be sitting higher up in the seat, which if anyone watched the Chris Fix video, who everyone did, uh, yeah, you're all absolutely right. So let us find out how fast this car can lap Cobra Sprint Course. Good start. Short shifter makes a lot of difference. Already into third gear. Oh, oh yeah, this is already faster. Brakes working wonderfully. Get it into second. Come on, baby. The light and flywheel means that I'm getting up to the rev limiter a lot more quickly than I was before. Bit of understeer, don't want that. Yes, I can change gear far quicker. And across the line. Ethan, what was the time? 39.33. 39.33 on a lap that I thought was pretty crap. Okay, we can do a lot better than that. As the laps progressed, the times were decreasing thanks to the addition of the light and flywheel, clutch and short shifter. But with the weather against me, it was a struggle to set a time that I was truly happy with. Still, on my last lap, I managed a time that I thought was very respectable given the circumstances. Oh, I'm done. If that was 38.4, I'll be super happy. 38.33. Oh, okay. All right, 38.33. I think that's the time that I can be happy with. So how much faster is that than the last lap from the previous episode where the weather was beautiful? So uh, almost 0.3 of a second. 0.3 of a second faster. Considering that the weather was against us, I was actually pretty content with a 38.33 time, but disappointed not to break into the 37s. Now it's time to see how the Type R fares in similar conditions. Three, two, one, go. Wheel spin there. Just spooling up those wheels. Gotta be a bit careful here because it's very greasy. but this has got phenomenal grip. And the punch out of the corner is amazing. Way bit of oversteer. One thing you notice with pretty much any modern car is that the steering is a lot more direct, quicker steering rack as well. So you don't have to hack at the wheel quite as much. Ah, right, so across the line where I was doing about 80 miles an hour in the Lexus. I'm doing 90 miles an hour in the Civic Type R. Not too bad, what was the time? 39.76. 39.76, okay. As the tires are getting warmer, those times are gonna improve. Because the Type R's front wheel drive layout means it was losing a lot of time off the greasy line, it actually looked like the Lexus might be able to beat the Hyper Hatch. But as the track began to dry, the Honda was able to get away cleanly and accelerate harder out of the bends. It's no surprise then that its 7th, 8th and 9th laps were fastest before the heavens opened to deny a 10th go. Gone. Oh, I think, Ethan, that is going to have to be our last lap because the rain is coming down, the heavens have opened. What was that? 37.83. Yeah! I'm happy that the Lexus is slower. Why am I happy about that? Because I knew that the Civic Type R would be quicker. 37.83 in the Civic Type R, 38.3 in the Lexus IS200 track car and yes the weather conditions are not ideal in the dry this car can do a 35 9 35 8 but in conditions like this they're not a million miles apart which is really impressive but i have to remind you guys this is a car you can daily drive it's comfortable the lexus has been built to be as fast as it possibly can
Looking from above, you can see that through the corners, both cars are very evenly matched. But as soon as there's a straight, the Type R's 306 brake horsepower helps it charge away from the Lexus. Out of the corners, the Civic's extra torque also helps slingshot it away more viciously. As you can see here, the Lexus and Type R carry the same speed into the corner, but the IS200's slower steering means that I'm unable to make the second right-hander as crisply as the Honda. The more composed body control of the Type R also helps it turn in better, which means it's able to trim the line better. At the hairpin, both cars are well matched also, but it's the Honda that punches itself towards the chicane much harder. You'll notice the fact that it's raining in the Civic footage, but both cars were on equally damp tarmac. My original target was to beat the 197 BHP Toyota GT86. And with this achieved in episode 3, the bar was set far higher to one of the fastest front-wheel drive cars on the planet. I knew deep down that the mighty Lexus wouldn't be able to beat it, but that wasn't the point. I wanted to know how close it could come, and I'm sure that you'll agree it put up a damn good fight, almost matching the Civic in the wet. So now let's do some number crunching. I originally bought the IS200 Sport for £900, onto which we've bolted on just under £3,800 worth of parts. These include new wheels and tyres, a full exhaust system and header, coilovers, better brakes, bucket seats and harnesses, a short shifter, a new performance air filter, a new clutch, and a lightened flywheel. We also stripped the interior, which saved well over 100 kilograms. Over the series, the IS200 track car has improved its lap times by 4.13 seconds. And while this might not sound like a lot, it's a massive 10% improvement. And with a little bit of man maths, this improvement equates to a one minute improvement if we're talking Nürburgring lap times on an average nine minute lap, which I think is awesome. It is awesome, it's a wicked car, and I will be very, very sad to see it go. But where there is sadness, there is joy because one of you guys can now go on eBay and win this car. And for me, there's only one more thing to say. Goodbye, my lover. <laughs> Massive thanks to eBay for sponsoring this awesome series. Click here for the previous episodes, here to subscribe, and here to bid on the IS200 track car on eBay. All proceeds will go to the Prostate Cancer Awareness Charity.